Have you ever wanted to make a decadent treat that's both simple and absolutely irresistible? Today, we're diving into one of my all-time favorite recipes, chocolate macadamia fudge. This rich, creamy fudge has the perfect crunch from macadamia nuts, and it's the kind of dessert that's guaranteed to impress. Stick around to see all the tips and tricks I use to make this recipe turn out perfect every time. Hi, I am Arena, and on this channel, I love sharing my favorite recipes and tips to help you create treats that are both delicious and beautiful, right from your own kitchen. You'll find links to all the tools I'm using, as well as other tasty recipes in the description below. Let's get started. Now it's time to set up our double boiler. Fill a cooking pot about one third of the way with water and bring it to a simmer. Once it's simmering, reduce the heat to low. Place a large glass or metal bowl over the pot, making sure the bottom of the bowl doesn't touch the water. This method helps the chocolate melt evenly without burning. Let's start by adding three cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips to the bowl. This will slowly melt into a rich chocolatey base for our fudge. Next, pour in one can of sweetened condensed milk. Remember, it should be at room temperature, so it blends smoothly with the melted chocolate. Now, add one quarter cup of room temperature unsalted butter to the mixture. This will add a velvety texture to the fudge, making it extra creamy. Finally, stir in one teaspoon of vanilla extract to bring out the best flavors in the chocolate and add some warmth to the fudge. Using a silicone spatula, gently stir the mixture as the chocolate begins to melt. I always prefer silicone spatulas because they're gentle on the bowl and flexible, allowing you to scrape down the sides to ensure every bit of chocolate melts evenly. As you stir, you'll notice the ingredients slowly coming together into a rich velvety mixture. Keep mixing until everything is fully combined and the fudge is smooth and glossy. It's crucial to stir continuously during this process, as this helps prevent the chocolate from seizing or separating. If you rush this step, you might end up with lumps or grainy bits in the fudge. Patience is key here. Take your time and enjoy the process. This is what gives your fudge that silky, professional-looking texture. If you ever feel like the mixture is getting too thick or not melting as smoothly, try turning down the heat just a bit to maintain that perfect consistency. I hope you're enjoying making this rich and creamy chocolate macadamia fudge as much as I am. If you're loving this recipe, be sure to hit that like button subscribe and tap the bell so you never miss out on any more sweet creations. Have you made fudge before? How did it turn out for you? If you've got any tips or tricks, I'd love to hear them in the comments. Thanks for spending time with me in the kitchen. Now, let's get back to finishing up this delicious fudge. Once 
Once your fudge mixture is smooth and dreamy, it's time to bring in the star of the show, one cup of whole shelled macadamia nuts. These little gems are like the VIP guests of your fudge party, adding a perfect crunch and that irresistible buttery flavor. Now, grab your trusty silicone spatula and gently fold the nuts into the fudge mixture. Be sure to mix them evenly, so every bite has that delicious balance of creamy chocolate and crunchy macadamia goodness. And here's a little tip. If you're a fan of chunkier fudge, feel free to add a bit more than one cup of nuts, but be careful not to overdo it, or you'll end up with more nut than fudge. Also, make sure to fold gently so you don't crush the nuts. We want them to stay nice and whole for that perfect texture in every bite. If you're feeling adventurous, you could even throw in some sea salt or a sprinkle of cinnamon for an extra flavor twist. Next, let's prepare our square cheesecake pan. Line the pan with parchment paper, making sure the paper hangs over the edges a bit. This little trick makes it super easy to lift the fudge out once it's set. If you're not sure how to line a baking sheet perfectly with parchment paper, I've got you covered. Check out my other video where I go over all the details. And if you're curious about what the best pan is for making fudge, I explain that in another video as well. Links are in the description. Once your pan is prepped, transfer the fudge mixture into the pan. Use a clean spatula to spread it out evenly, making sure to fill all the corners. Take your time here. This step is key to getting a nice smooth top, which makes your fudge look extra professional when it's all set and ready to go. Place the pan in the refrigerator and let the fudge set for at least two hours. For best results, I recommend leaving it overnight to really firm up. Now that the fudge has hardened, it's time to cut it into perfect squares. Before we get started, prepare your cutting board, disposable gloves, and a large knife. I always recommend using disposable gloves while handling fudge. Not only does it keep things clean and hygienic, but it also prevents leaving fingerprints or smudges on the smooth surface of the fudge. Plus, it makes the process feel a bit more professional, especially if you're gifting the fudge or serving it at a party. I also like to have a wet kitchen towel nearby to wipe the knife after each cut. This helps keep the slices clean and ensures smooth, sharp edges without any chocolate buildup on the blade. Once you've got everything ready, carefully remove the fudge from the fridge and peel it off the parchment paper. Place the block of fudge on your cutting board and you're ready to start slicing. First, use a five-wheel pastry cutter to score the fudge into even squares. This tool makes it super easy to get evenly sized pieces without much effort. 
Once you've scored one direction, turn the fudge block 90 degrees and score again, creating a perfect grid of squares. But don't worry, if you don't have a five-wheel pastry cutter on hand, I've got a video just for you, explaining how to achieve perfectly, even fudge squares, using a simple paper template. It's an easy workaround, and you'll still end up with beautifully uniform pieces that look professionally done. Be sure to check it out in the links below. Once the fudge is scored, grab your large knife and carefully cut along the lines you've made. Be sure to press down gently but firmly to get clean cuts all the way through. It's important to wipe the knife clean with a wet towel between each cut. This little step will ensure you get smooth, clean edges on each piece without the chocolate sticking to the blade. After you've made the initial cuts, gently push the squares back together to maintain the shape of the block. Turn the fudge block 90 degrees and continue cutting along the remaining scored lines. This will give you perfectly even squares, making your fudge look neat and professional. Take your time with this part. Precision here will really pay off when it comes time to serve or gift your delicious fudge. And if you want extra smooth edges, try dipping your knife in hot water before each cut. Fudge can stay fresh for different amounts of time, depending on how you store it, and each method has its perks. On the countertop, it'll last about one to two weeks if you keep it in a cool, dry spot. This is perfect if you're planning to enjoy it pretty quickly or have it yet out for holiday, gatherings. In the fridge, fudge can stay fresh for three to four weeks, it's a great option if you've made a big batch and want to stretch it out a bit without worrying about it going stale. In the freezer, it can last for up to three months. Freezing fudge is a lifesaver if you want to make it ahead of time or save some for later. It thaws really well, so it'll taste just as good as when you made it. No matter how you decide to store it, your fudge will keep its flavor and texture so you can enjoy it whenever the sweet craving hits. And there you have it, delicious, rich chocolate macadamia fudge, ready to be enjoyed. Whether you're serving this at a holiday party, gifting it to friends, or keeping it all for yourself, I won't judge. This fudge is sure to be a hit. If you're planning to gift your fudge, be sure to check out my video on how to package fudge beautifully for gifting. And if you'd like to know how to freeze fudge to enjoy later, I've got a video for that too. Links are in the description below. Happy fudge making. If you love this recipe, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more amazing recipes. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen. Happy baking, and I'll see you in the next video.